Okay, so I wanted to quickly walk you through the structure of an atom and talk a little bit about electron orbitals. <clears throat> and so for an atom, we know that there are basically three different subatomic particles that make up the atom. There's the um, protons, which carry a positive charge. There are neutrons, which are neutral, they carry no charge, okay? And there are electrons, which carry a negative charge. These three subatomic particles make up an atom, and the way they are actually organized is that you have what we call a nucleus at the center of an atom, and within that nucleus, we have protons, and we have neutrons. Those are found in the nucleus of an atom. Now if we look um, outside of that nucleus, we see orbitals. And typically we display these as circles that are surrounding that nucleus. So we have the positive charge and the neutrons inside the nucleus. And then outside of that nucleus, we have electrons, which are negatively charged, that are surrounding that nucleus. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and these are orbiting around. In actuality, they're not orbiting in a perfect circle like planets around a sun, but rather they are moving all throughout um, that, that space. And so we just show them in an organized way in orbitals, but in actuality, they're kind of in a cloud around that nucleus. Now let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> the number of protons and the number of electrons that would be found in a nucleus. This is determined by the atom that we are looking at. So we're going to start with one <clears throat> atom, uh, the element of carbon. Now if we look at carbon on a periodic table, what we will see <clears throat> is this. So we will see the name, carbon, the symbol is C, and then the mass, or the average weight, is 12.012. So if we were looking on a periodic table, this is what we would see for carbon. So let's kind of dissect what these different numbers mean. <clears throat> the top number here, 6 in the case of carbon, this is called the atomic number, okay? And what this number represents is the number of protons for this element. So that means that carbon has six protons in its nucleus. The second part that you see here, go to a different color, we have the name obviously of the element, and the symbol. So each of the elements has a either one or two letter symbol that can represent that element. And when we draw chemical structures, we usually use that symbol um, rather than writing out the full word carbon. Okay, so that's called the symbol. This number down here, this is called the atomic weight. Okay, so this is atomic weight for that uh, element. And what that means is that if we took the average weight of all of the carbon atoms that are in existence, the weight would be 12.012. And so we're going to get into in another video um, isotopes, which are variations on atoms with different numbers of neutrons. But it, suffice it to say right now that the, av that the average weight for carbon, the element carbon, is 12.012. Where does the weight come from? Well, it turns out, I'm going to go back to this, that these little electrons that we are showing here and here, these are extremely, extremely small compared to the, the mass of the protons and neutrons. So the mass of an atom comes from the mass of the protons, so basically the number of protons plus the number of neutrons 
that equals atomic mass. Because the electrons are so small, these are essentially negligible. We don't even count them. <clears throat> okay, so we don't even count them in the mass of that atom. So let's get back to carbon. Let's try to draw what the structure of a carbon atom would look like, given the information that we have here. So we're going to start on another slide here, and we are going to start with our protons. Okay, how do we know how many protons are in carbon? Well, from our symbol here, we know that there are six protons in the atom carbon. Okay, so we know that we have six protons with a positive charge. Um, we can then also figure out from another value, we can figure out what the number of neutrons is by looking at, I'm going to flip back to this, by looking at the atomic weight because I told you that the atomic mass of an atom comes from the weight of the protons and the neutrons. It's the sum of the protons and the neutrons. Okay, so if we know that 12 is equal to, we know we have six protons, we can then figure out how many neutrons we must have. And so we must have six neutrons in this, um, in this nucleus. Okay, now we can look at the electrons. And I'm going to remind you about a couple of rules that you might have learned in chemistry. Um, electrons are organized in orbitals around the nucleus, and there's different numbers of electrons in each of these orbitals. There's sort of a rule. So the first orbital can contain two electrons, and the second and subsequent orbitals contain eight electrons total. And this is really important because atoms are going to be the most stable when they have a complete outer orbital with either eight, if it's the second orbital, or two electrons if they only have one orbital. And this is called the octet rule. So that's the idea that an atom is the most stable when it can complete its outer orbital. Now, we are going to try to figure out how many electrons are in carbon. Well, we know there's six protons. In this case, we have neutral carbon. That means there's no charge on carbon, which tells us that the number of protons must be equal to the number of electrons. So in this case, we know that we must have six electrons, six protons, and we have six neutrons. If we add this all up, we would be chemically neutral, electrically neutral. Okay, so we need to now put eight electrons in the orbitals. Okay, so we can start with the first orbital and it can contain two electrons, as we see here. We get two electrons in the first orbital. In the second orbital, we can we can put up to eight, but in this case, we only have, we have used two, so we only have four electrons left. So we will put them in, into position here. Now, you can see here that we, we can have up to eight, and we only actually have four electrons in the outer orbital. And that gives us another term when there are if you look at the outer orbital, that is called the valence for that atom. Okay, so carbon has a valence number of four. It actually has space for four more electrons. This is important because that tells us that carbon can bond with up to four different things. Okay, so let's put carbon again carbon here has a valence number of four. This means it can bond with four things. 
four other atoms. Okay. Now, what I would like you to do is to walk through this exact same exercise, but instead of looking at carbon, I would like you to try to do nitrogen. Okay, and I'm going to put the what you would see on the periodic table for nitrogen right here. So this is nitrogen. Okay, so this is what we see on the periodic table for nitrogen. So right now, if you can take a moment and try to figure out how many protons, how many neutrons, how many electrons in the first orbital, how many electrons in the second orbital. And then the question is, what is the valence of nitrogen? Okay.